Rogers Show, starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his golden palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. Well, riders, Trigger here is raring to go, so let's get started with today's story. Here she comes. Let's move over here where we can watch her till she leaves town. Say, Roy. Did you ever see this little trick? No. This is a little exercise that shows the hand is quicker than the eye. Now watch. Dale, try to find the black-eyed pea. Like this? <laughs> Easy, ain't it? <laughs> now you try, Roy. Like this? <laughs> That's easier than falling off a log. Now, <clears throat> would anybody like to make a little wager, say, uh, 50 cents? Now, you know I don't gamble, Pat. I don't either. All right, then I'll, uh, I'll bet for both of you. Now, here we go. Now, pick. You first, Dale. But remember, if you don't find the black-eyed pea, the four bits is mine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there it is. There it is. We get the four bits, Dale. Well, I'll be frightened, Snake Oil, if this isn't a swindle. How come there's three black-eyed peas there when I only started with one? Well, now, we had black-eyed peas for lunch. That give you any ideas? Here, Pat, you better stick with this. Maybe you can prove that the hand is quicker than the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. Can anyone tell me when the next stage leaves for Red Dog? Uh, you did say Red Dog, miss? That's what I said. There must be some mistake. You can't mean Red Dog. Well, I hoped I'd made myself clear. I do want to go to Red Dog. Honey, would you mind telling me why you want to go there? I'll have you know that my father is the mayor of Red Dog. Oh, I know there's some mistake. You sit down and have a cup of coffee. Let's talk this over. But I'm in a hurry. There's no transportation to Red Dog. No transportation? But my father wrote and told me to come to Red Dog at once. I came all the way from Connecticut. Here, read this. I want you to come out to Red Dog and take care of my house. I'll need a hostess now that I'm there. Uh, excuse me, miss, uh, but isn't your dad a mite dub? My father is a graduate mining engineer, a brilliant man. Honey, Red Dog has been a ghost town for 50 years, ever since they worked out the gold deposit. Sure, there's nothing there but broken down buildings and abandoned mines. I can't believe it. Why would my father write and tell me to leave a good position and come all the way out here. Listen, we'll take you out to Red Dog and let you see for yourself. Have a cup of coffee while I go change. You know, Dale, that father of hers must be a strange one. Yes. Imagine him getting her to leave a fine home to come out here and live in a ghost town. I feel sorry for her. Well, so do I. She seems to be a pretty sweet girl underneath that highfalutin manner. Yeah. Hey, Pat. You take the lead and we'll follow. Now, some people like horses. But me, I like Nellie Bell. She can do anything a horse can do, only faster and better. Why, she even talks back to me. Isn't that right, Nellie Bell? See what I mean? She talks back to me every time. What's that? Someone's using us for target practice. Where are they shooting from? From those big rocks on the left. There's two of them, and one of them's got a rifle. That already discouraged him from going any farther. Yeah? Well, you don't know Rogers like I do. Only one way to discourage him, and that's make it permanent. What I aim to do. 
Do you recognize him? No, but I'm going to get a closer look. You keep him busy. down or you lose it quicker to take the passenger train to pass up a hobo. Get out of here. They're coming at us from both sides. Go ahead. I'll cover you. a good look at him anyway. Who were they, Roy? I don't know. I didn't get close enough to him. Looks to me like they didn't want us to get the red dog. Well, they're not going to get their wish. Come on, Dad, let's go. Hot dog. Now we continue on our way to red dog. <laughs> get it? Red dog. Hot dog. <laughs> Delighted to know you. Pat Brady. How are you? Howdy. And I'm Roy Rogers. How do you do? Dad, we were ambushed on our way here. Ambushed? I reckon it's those outlaws that have been causing me trouble. If it weren't for these people. Well, thank you for taking care of my little girl. Now, how about all of us adjourning to the city hall? Fine. Pat, take care of the horses, will you? City Hall. I tell you, Betty, it's mighty good to have you back. Say, take a look at that sign. I painted it myself. Looks like you've been pretty busy with the paintbrush. Well, you take a look inside. After you, ladies. Boy. Well, how do you like it, folks? Well, I think it's the handsomest city hall in the whole Paradise Valley. Well, I should say. But it does need a woman's touch. Good thing you sent for Betty. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. The living quarters are upstairs. Four rooms and a Franklin stove. How do you like it, daughter? Well, I think it's fine, Father. Then how about fixing us some tea and sandwiches? You'll find the grub in the kitchen upstairs. All right. Good. I'll help you. I'll take that, Pat. Tell me about the ambush, Roy. I wish I knew more about it myself, Mayor. You see, the bushwhackers got away before we got a good look at them. You having trouble here? Yes, but I reckon I can handle it myself. What are you doing, Pat? There's a little black-eyed pea under one of these shells, Your Honor. Uh, try picking one. Well, I don't know that gambling's legal in the city hall, but as chief of police as well as mayor, I'll overlook it this time. <laughs> it's easy, ain't it? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Pat. 
Fun's fun, but the mayor may have something more important to tend to. Frankly, this game fascinates me. Let me see if I can do it again. All right, just one moment. <clears throat> Say, this is fun. I'll bet I could pick that little black pea every time. Would you like to make a little bet? Now, Pat, never mind, Roy. We'll make just a small wager, say, uh, ten dollars. Ten dollars? Well, five, then. Well, that's better. Easy shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> you better practice a little. I just don't think I got the hang of this yet. Yes, I guess everyone down to the claims office thought I was crazy when I filed to homestead this land. They said all I'd find was a lot of desert and a ghost town. Well, that suits me all right. I bet you found a gold deposit. Maybe I did and maybe I didn't. I'm not talking. But I guarantee this property will be worth a mint before long. Well, you're the mining engineer. You ought to know. Well, I guess we'd better be heading back to Mineral City. Yeah, I don't like to keep Nellie Bell out too late. She gets a little hard to start in the dark. <laughs> oh, sorry, I have to go, folks. And thanks again for taking care of my little girl. Anytime you get lonely, Betty, you come in and have dinner with us, huh? Thank you. Be a pleasure to see you anytime, Mayor. You know, Mayor, I'm worried about you folks. Those bushwhackers weren't fooling. Maybe they know there's a mint in this property, too. Don't worry, Roy. I've got plenty of firearms and ammunition. Thanks again, folks. Well, thank you for your hospitality. Otherwise, the outlaws wouldn't be trying to chase him away. Sheriff Lodgett? Yes? I'm looking for a little information. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, my name is John Parrish, and I represent the railroad. I'm trying to find the legal owner of that ghost town Red Dog. Well, that's mighty interesting. This here is Roy Rogers, Mr. Parrish. How do you do, sir? How do you do? What's the railroad want with Red Dog? We're figuring on running a spur there. We want to use the town as a switchyard, mainly for freight. So that's it. So that's what? That's why Red Dog became so important all of a sudden. I understand Peter Arnold filed a homestead on Red Dog, and it belongs to him. Well, there's some doubt about that. It seems that two parties filed, one of them Ned Croton. And I'm here to find the legal owner. Ned Croton, huh? Say, he's that lawyer who used to practice around here. Yep, and he was disbarred after that fake mining deal he pulled. Let's take a ride out to Red Dog and see what this is all about. You better come along with us, Mr. Parrish. Some rattlers ripped up all the improvements in here. What improvements? 
Well, I was in here yesterday, and this office is as neat as a pin. Probably the same man that ambushed Arnold. I'm afraid I don't know what you two are talking about. What are you doing here anyway, Croton? I'm in possession of this property. I filed a claim on it. Now, wait a minute. I happen to know that Peter Arnold filed a claim here. He did? Well, either he filed too late or he didn't comply with the law. What law? The law that says you must improve your property $100 a year. You can see for yourself this place hasn't been improved five cents worth. It was improved when I saw it. I still don't know what you're talking about. Maybe I'm talking about claim jumping. Now, wait a minute, Roy. You can't call me a claim jumper. What I'm doing is according to the law. And let me remind you that possession in a claim decision is nine points of that law. I'm afraid he's right. However, the railroad company is not going to get mixed up in this until it's settled legally. It'll be settled legally as soon as I put in my $100 worth of improvements. Let's take a look at the place. Hasn't been a thing done here in years. Falling apart with dry rot. Looks like he's got a stymied, Roy. This is a matter for the court to decide. Let's go. This is my property, Rogers, and I'm inviting you to leave. You heard me get out. It's a funny thing, Croton. You said this place was falling apart with dry rot. Doesn't look like dry rot to me. I believe somebody deliberately busted these things up. You're too nosy for your own good, Rogers. Now, are you going or do I... business with Cruton. I'm afraid he's got us, Roy. It's up to the court. You heard what Parrish said. I guess I wasn't listening. What happened to you? Looks like you got mixed up with a buzz saw. Just a little argument with Rogers. But he didn't gain anything legally. Yeah? Well, what if he and the others swear that this property was improved? I got a hunch Rogers and that old mining engineer won't get a chance to testify. Come on, let's go to town. do for you. You can tell me where Peter Arnold is. Why? I've got business with him. Maybe he doesn't want to do any business with you. That'll be for me to decide. Now, where is he? I don't know. Oh, stop fooling. Let's get around. If that dog move, shoot him. You're not going to shoot anybody. Pull it. Get Roy. I wouldn't do that. You better come with us. Are you still stewing about Croton and his claim jumping? I'm more than stewing. I'm... Hi, Bullet. What's up, fella? What's the matter? Hey, Pat. Something's wrong. Say Dale's in trouble. Where's your father? He's upstairs taking a nap. Pat, you better stay here and look after Betty and her father. This might be a trick of some kind. Pull up now, see if we can find Dale. Come on, Bullet. You're in good hands now, Betty. <laughs> Go find Dale, Bullet. <laughs> Tell the dog to go fetch him. If I know Rogers, he won't wait for a posse. That'll suit us just fine.
Here he comes. Get ready. hit with the wrong end of that gun. As far as I'm concerned, they're both wrong ends. Now, if that had happened to me, it would have busted these gun handles. Why, my old man used to say he could crack walnuts on my skull. And I believe it. Sure. Uh, speaking of walnuts, <coughs> Miss Betty, do you suppose you could pick out the shell that has the black-eyed pea under it? Pat, not that again. Put those things away, Pat. We've got work to do. You and I are riding out to Red Doe. Well, I'm going with you. I have a score to settle, too. Well, my arm doesn't feel so bad. I'll go along. You're going to stay here. Okay. But I'll give you a tip that might prove useful to you. There's a back way leading up into that city hall. It's the shaft of an old mine. This must be it. There's the ladder. I'll go up first. Scared the death of a dog. Yeah? What are you blaming me for? Beans again? Is that all you got to eat around here? You don't like it? Fix your own grub. Now, wait a minute. There's no sense us fighting. As soon as the court gives us legal possession, we'll sell out to the railroad and get out of here. We won't have to eat beans anymore. That sounds good to me. Well, I'll tell you how it sounds to me after I hear the court's decision. Listen, I know my law. And the longer we stay here, the easier it'll be to claim possession. I right, get him up. You won't be in possession long. Stay right where you are, Mr. Croton. to use all the law you ever knew. Get going. And I want to say that I shall accept my responsibilities as mayor of this fair community seriously and earnestly. And I will give this town the type of government it is entitled to. First of all, I shall institute a police force, second to none. My friend, here's a little game of exercise of perception. The hand is quicker than the eye. Now, the idea is for you to pick the shell that has the black eye pea under it. Now, watch closely. I've done it! I've finally done it! Seems as though something's missing, Aloysius. What some people won't do to win a bet. Are you incinerating that I didn't use a black-eyed pea in this game? Why? Well, here 
it is, Mr. Brady. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. I guess that'll put an end to Pat's gambling for a while. Maybe you'd better see that we don't have black-eyed peas on the menu anymore. Yeah. Oh.